We're now going to look at how to compute forces and moments given the complex velocity potential and complex velocity. Uh, so to start with, we are going to look first at the definitions of circulation and net flow uh, in two dimensions. So let's say that we have some uh, closed surface here and uh, we've got a flow field uh, going through that surface so we've got some velocity and uh, and we are now going to integrate along the surface of this uh, closed surface and uh, here's our ds and at each point we also have a normal vector okay so ds is also a vector so we've seen previously that the circulation can be defined as the integral over this closed surface actually the negative of that integral of v dot ds okay and that's just the definition of circulation um, and now we're going to add to that uh, one more thing um, this is the uh, volume outflow per unit depth so depth being in and out of the paper here um, uh, then this is the volume outflow we could get by integrating over that surface and looking at the velocity that is normal to the surface at every point. So we would look at v dot n and integrate over ds, which is now a scalar. So by integrating um, around the surface and looking at the velocity that is normal to the surface and, uh, and, and doing that as a closed interval, we can figure out how much flow is exiting uh, or entering the domain, the, a net flow. That's this net flow term up here. Okay. Um, okay, so now some uh, relations here. So uh, we can prove, and I'm not going to work through this, but we can prove that V dot ds is related to our velocity potential uh, by that, by d phi, uh, that it's equal to d phi, and we can also prove that v dot n ds is uh, equal to d psi, where psi is the streamline function, uh, streamline functions. Okay, so, um, so if we just plug these in now, uh, we're just going to plug these into those equations up there, and so we can show that gamma now is related to, or can be computed from the velocity potential. Uh, it's negative, uh, the, the integral over that close surface of d phi. If we plug that in, and then uh, that capital lambda here is simply the integral over that close surface of d psi. Okay, now... Um, one thing that, that we like to do with phi and psi is uh, turn those into a complex um, uh, a complex uh, function. So uh, capital phi, for example, is equal to little phi uh, plus i psi. And so we'd like to put that in this form here. Um, and so what we're going to say is uh, that lambda minus i, or excuse me, gamma minus i times lambda is equal to the negative integral over this closed surface of d phi plus i d psi. Okay, so I've just taken these two here and uh, combined them into, uh, into a complex number. Uh, that we're going to integrate and um, and so that uh, uh, obviously the d phi plus i d psi uh, then we could actually write that as negative of the integral over c of uh, just d capital phi um, and then if we recognize that that is also related to the so that's the the change in um, complex velocity potential and the derivative of that is the complex velocity itself so that's uh, we could also write that as minus the integral over this closed surface of the complex velocity as a function of z 
times dz. Okay, so this is uh, gamma minus i lambda. All right, so this is uh, an important relationship that we're going to use in order to now, basically what this does is it relates the, um, the circulation, which we know is related to lift. We're going to prove that here in the next couple videos, but we know that that's related to lift. And uh, this is the, the net flow um, or the volume outflow per unit depth. Um, and, uh, and those are both related to the uh, velocity potential, the complex potential, and the, uh, the complex velocity uh, through these integrals here. Now, um, one thing to note is that lambda is equal to zero for, uh, for a steady state... Um, incompressible flow uh, with no uh, no generation or destruction of mass. So, um, so for example, uh, so that that makes sense. I think you know if we look at the net flow here, uh, this integral as we integrate around this, if we're in steady state flow and there's no um, and it's uh, incompressible, then uh, then we can't have any mass building up in this region. And, um, and so the net flow has to be equal to zero. Um, now, the generation portion, um, there, are, there are two terms here to be aware of. And those, uh, those two terms are blowing and suction. So on some airfoils, uh, they, uh, or on some wings, they use some form of blowing or suction where they might have a little... Uh, orifice or some opening here on the airfoil where they're actually blowing air out and uh, that energizes the boundary layer and keeps the flow attached um, and so in that case you're adding uh, mass to this domain you know if we were to integrate around this domain uh, we'd have mass that's being generated or, or added there to the flow or uh, suction sometimes um, they'll they'll actually uh, have some of the the flow gets sucked into the airfoil for cooling or or other purposes, and and actually sometimes they'll even suck it off the back here. Uh, they'll they'll pull the flow in, and that's another way of keeping the flow attached. Anyway, these types of things that's called blowing and suction, and uh, in those cases you're adding flow or or taking away flow to this to this region or this domain, um, and so then in that case then lambda would be non-zero. But for city-state incompressible flow with no generation or destruction, you know, no blowing and suction, then lambda is equal to zero.